A prejudiced bank teller dismisses a black couple's loan application, convinced they don't belong, only to learn the hard way that karma has a way of balancing the scales. Months later, when Claire stumbles into their thriving cafe, she's greeted with kindness, forcing her to confront her own biases and the consequences of her actions. Before we get started, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more exciting content, and let us know where you're watching from in the comments. Now, let's dive in. The morning sun shone brightly, but Jordan and Mia felt a mixture of nervous excitement as they walked hand in hand through the bank's glass doors. Today marked the next step in a long, difficult journey toward their dream. They had spent years planning, saving, and preparing to open their dream cafe. Everything they needed was ready. The business plan polished, finances carefully organized, and their hearts full of hope. Mia adjusted her blouse, the soft click of her heels sounding on the marble floor. She clutched the leather folder filled with their paperwork, holding it close to her chest like it contained all the aspirations they had nurtured together. Jordan gave her hand a reassuring squeeze. We've got this, he whispered with a confident smile. Mia returned the smile, though a flicker of anxiety remained in her eyes. The bank's interior was spacious and pristine, humming with the quiet murmur of customers and the occasional tapping of keyboards. They made their way to the counter, where a middle-aged teller with sharp features glanced up at them. Her name tag read Claire, and her expression was pinched, as if the act of smiling was a heavy burden. Good morning, Jordan greeted, offering a polite nod. We're here to apply for a business loan. Claire's eyes flicked between them, her expression barely concealing a hint of skepticism. Her gaze lingered on Mia's natural curls, the bold color of her lipstick, and the casual but neat way Jordan wore his collared shirt untucked. Something in her demeanor shifted, subtle but unmistakable, as if she had instantly filed them into a mental category. Do you have an appointment? Claire asked coolly, her fingers tapping against the keyboard without looking up. We were told to come in today and meet with someone, Mia responded, her voice steady despite the nervous flutter in her chest. Claire hummed dismissively, glancing at the computer screen with an air of boredom. Well, it's going to take a lot more than just showing up. There's an extensive application process, and you'll need to provide significant documentation. Proof of business experience, tax returns, personal finances, credit histories. She listed the requirements in a tone that made it sound impossible, as if they were already doomed to fail. Mia shifted uncomfortably, but she kept her composure. We've brought everything with us, she said, lifting the folder. Claire looked at the folder, her eyes narrowing slightly. She didn't reach for it. Instead, she leaned back in her chair, folding her arms across her chest as if to say, Impress me. Loan decisions aren't made overnight, Claire added curtly. The process can take weeks, sometimes months, and of course, approval isn't guaranteed. There was no reason for her to act this way. Mia knew it, and so did Jordan. But they had faced this kind of treatment before, subtle acts of dismissal that spoke volumes. It was the kind of treatment that people in their position were all too familiar with. Jordan smiled politely though the frustration beneath the surface simmered. We understand, he replied calmly. That's why we've prepared everything in advance. We've included our credit reports, financial statements, and a detailed business plan. Claire let out a small, almost imperceptible scoff. She still hadn't asked to see their documents. Instead, she gave them a thin-lipped smile that didn't reach her eyes. I'll take it under consideration. Someone will be in touch. Mia felt the words like a slap. The interaction was ending before it even had a chance to begin. She exchanged a glance with Jordan, seeing the disappointment mirrored in his eyes. They had hoped for at least a conversation, some acknowledgement of their hard work, but instead, they were being brushed off without a second thought. Claire's smile was smug now, as if she was satisfied with the outcome. To her, this was just another transaction another set of people she didn't need to bother with. She tapped away at the computer without looking at them again, already moving on. Jordan nodded once, his jaw tight. He reached for Mia's hand, and together they turned to leave. Mia held her head high, determined not to let Claire see how much the encounter had stung. But inside, a familiar ache spread through her chest, a mixture of frustration 
sadness, and exhaustion. As they made their way to the exit, they passed an older security guard standing near the door. He was tall, with a tired but kind expression, his uniform slightly wrinkled from hours of wear. His name tag read Harris. Mr. Harris had been watching the interaction from a distance. Unnoticed by Claire and the other employees, he'd seen the dismissive way Claire had treated the couple and the subtle but unmistakable shift in her demeanor. It wasn't the first time he'd witnessed something like this, and it probably wouldn't be the last. As Jordan and Mia walked past him, Harris gave them a small nod, a silent gesture of acknowledgement. Mia returned the nod with a polite smile, though her heart felt heavy. Harris's gaze followed them as they left, the door swinging shut behind them with a quiet hiss. Claire, oblivious to the quiet moment of solidarity, continued typing away at her desk, completely unbothered by what had just transpired. To her, Jordan and Mia were nothing more than another set of applicants, people she had no intention of helping. Outside, the sun still shone, but it felt colder now. Jordan and Mia walked toward their car in silence, their footsteps heavy on the pavement. Do you think she even looked at the paperwork? Mia asked quietly, her voice filled with frustration. Jordan shook his head. Not a chance, he muttered. They reached their car, and Jordan unlocked the door. Mia climbed in, clutching the folder tightly on her lap. She stared out of the window, time watching the people on the street go about their day, feeling a pang of resentment that things had to be this way. We'll try another bank, Jordan said, his tone gentle but firm. This isn't the end. Mia nodded slowly, though the weight of disappointment still pressed down on her. It's just so tiring, she whispered, having to prove ourselves over and over again just to be treated like we don't belong. Jordan placed a hand on her knee, giving it a reassuring squeeze. We belong, he said softly, and we'll keep going until someone sees that. Mia managed a small smile, though her heart still ached. Yeah, she murmured. We'll keep going. Inside the bank, Claire glanced at the clock, eager for her shift to end. She had no idea how the interaction she had just dismissed so carelessly would come back to haunt her. Life had a way of balancing the scales and sometimes karma had a funny way of making things right. Mr. Harris, standing near the door, watched Claire with a thoughtful expression. He knew people like her, people who judged without knowing, who dismissed without understanding. And he knew, from years of experience, that life had a way of teaching lessons when people least expected it. He sighed quietly, shifting his weight from one foot to the other, and glanced toward the door where Jordan and Mia had disappeared. A sense of unease settled in his chest, as if something bigger was at play, something no one could see just yet. And with that, the first chapter of their story ended, though it was far from over. The wheels of fate were already turning, and soon Claire would learn a lesson she would never forget. Jordan and Mia sat silently in the car, the echo of Claire's dismissiveness lingering between them like a bad taste they couldn't wash away. Jordan stared out the windshield, gripping the steering wheel, while Mia rested her head back, gazing at the distant sky. Their dream cafe felt further away now than ever, as if the distance between them and that loan was insurmountable. They had anticipated challenges. They knew starting a business wasn't easy, but what cut the deepest wasn't just being denied. It was the way Claire had dismissed them without even a sliver of respect, without seeing them as the capable, hard-working people they were. This wasn't the first time they had encountered this kind of prejudice, and Mia feared it wouldn't be the last. I just don't get it, Mia muttered, breaking the silence. Her voice was soft, tired. Why do they look at us like we don't belong? Like we're not good enough? Jordan exhaled a long breath through his nose, drumming his fingers on the wheel. Because they've already decided who we are before we even open our mouths, he said bitterly, and no amount of preparation changes that. Mia shifted in her seat, hugging the folder of documents to her chest. It felt like a shield, though an ineffective one. We worked so hard for this, she whispered. How can someone just dismiss us like that? Jordan didn't have an answer. All he could do was stare at the folder that represented everything they had poured their hopes into, only for it to be rejected without even a second glance. He forced a smile, though it didn't reach his eyes. It's just one bank, babe, he said. We'll find someone else who believes in us. Mia looked at him, 
her brown eyes filled with a mixture of gratitude and frustration. I know, she whispered, though the ache in her chest didn't go away. As they pulled away from the bank and drove through the quiet streets, the reality of the situation settled over them like a heavy fog. The morning had started with such promise, and now it felt like they were back at square one. Every small step forward seemed to come with a bigger step back, and it was exhausting. They stopped at a small park, needing a moment to regroup before going home. The trees swayed gently in the breeze, and children played in the distance, their laughter carrying through the air like a reminder that life goes on, even when dreams falter. Mia sat on a bench, fiddling with the corner of the folder. I just wish, I wish things were different, she said quietly. Jordan sat beside her, leaning forward with his elbows on his knees. Me too, he admitted. But wishing doesn't change anything. For a moment they sat in silence, watching the world move around them. People walked their dogs, joggers passed by with headphones in their ears, and the sounds of life filled the air. It was moments like these that reminded Mia how small their struggle seemed to others, and yet, to her, it was everything. We'll figure it out, Jordan said finally, his voice low but steady. We always do. Mia smiled faintly, appreciating his optimism, even when she struggled to find her own. Yeah, she murmured, we will. They stayed at the park for a while, letting the weight of the day settle before heading home. But even as they tried to find comfort in each other's presence, the frustration lingered. Prejudice wasn't something they could escape. It followed them, casting shadows over their efforts and dreams. Back at the bank, Claire went about her day as if nothing significant had happened. To her, Jordan and Mia were already forgotten, filed away in the back of her mind as just another failed application. She didn't think twice about the interaction, it was simply routine. In Claire's world, she had done her job, keeping the undesirable clients from wasting the bank's time. But Mr. Harris, the security guard, hadn't forgotten. He had seen too much in his years working at the bank, people being treated unfairly, dismissed because of their appearance, and judged without reason. It weighed on him, though he knew there was little he could do. He thought about Jordan and Mia as he leaned against the wall, watching customers come and go. He wondered how many times people like them had been turned away without a chance, without a second thought. And he wondered how many dreams had been crushed under the weight of someone else's assumptions. Later that afternoon, as Harris stood near the entrance, he noticed Claire chatting with a colleague, her demeanor light and cheerful. She didn't seem to have a care in the world. Harris shook his head slightly, a bitter taste in his mouth. He knew that karma had a way of catching up with people like her. It was just a matter of time. Meanwhile, Jordan and Mia returned home, trying to shake off the disappointment. They sat at the kitchen table, spreading out their paperwork and going over their next steps. They would apply to other banks, reach out to more lenders, anything to keep their dream alive. Mia ran a hand through her curls, frustration bubbling beneath the surface. It's not just about the loan, she said suddenly, slamming the folder shut. It's about how they see us, like we're less than. Jordan reached across the table, taking her hand in his. They don't define us, Mia, he said firmly. We define us, and we're going to prove them wrong. Mia met his gaze, her frustration slowly giving way to determination. You're right, she whispered. We will. The two of them sat in silence for a moment, letting the resolve settle between them. It wasn't going to be easy, but they had faced challenges before, and they would face this one too. As they cleaned up the papers and prepared for the evening, a sense of quiet strength filled the room. They knew the road ahead would be difficult, but they also knew they weren't alone. They had each other, and that was more powerful than any prejudice they would encounter. In the days that followed, they submitted applications to other banks and explored new avenues for funding. They refused to let Claire's dismissiveness define their future. And though the sting of rejection lingered, it only fueled their determination. Back at the bank, Claire continued with her work, oblivious to the impact of her actions. To her, Jordan and Mia were just another set of faces in a long line of applicants, forgotten as soon as they walked out the door. But life had a way of balancing the scales, and Claire's moment of reckoning was drawing closer, even if she couldn't see it yet. 
and as Mr. Harris stood watch at the entrance, a quiet sense of anticipation settled over him. He had seen enough in his lifetime to know that what goes around always comes around. Sooner or later, the truth would reveal itself. And when it did, Claire would learn that the smallest actions could have the biggest consequences. Claire's week dragged on in the same monotonous routine. Each day was filled with the same interactions, customers coming in and out, most treated with polite indifference unless they fit her idea of serious clients. Jordan and Mia were long forgotten in her mind, filed away as just another unsuccessful encounter. She prided herself on knowing who to prioritize and who to dismiss, convinced that she was simply good at her job. But fate had a different plan, and her sense of control was about to unravel in the most unexpected way. It was Thursday afternoon when it happened. The bank was unusually quiet, with just a handful of customers waiting in line. Claire had just finished a cup of coffee and was scrolling mindlessly through emails when a figure entered the bank. From the corner of her eye, she noticed a man walk in, a disheveled figure, with a hood pulled low over his face. Her body tensed immediately. She tried to suppress the spike of anxiety, but her eyes narrowed instinctively. He didn't fit the image of a good customer. His clothes were worn and crumpled, his posture slouched in a way that made her uneasy. Claire's mind immediately went to the worst possible scenario. The man shuffled closer to her counter, his movements quick but shaky. I need help, he muttered, his voice strained and desperate. I need to speak to someone, right now. Claire's heart began to race. She shot a glance at Mr. Harris, the security guard, who stood by the entrance watching the situation closely. She could feel her palms begin to sweat, her mind jumping to every fear-driven scenario she could think of. Trying to stay composed, Claire spoke in a clipped tone. Sir, you'll need to wait your turn, she said, keeping her voice firm but polite. We have other customers to assist. The man's hands trembled, and Claire noticed that he clutched a crumpled stack of papers in one hand. He didn't appear violent, just desperate. But Claire's fear and judgment clouded her ability to assess the situation clearly. I don't have time to wait, the man snapped his voice cracking under the weight of frustration. His wild, bloodshot eyes scanned the room as if searching for someone to help him. Please, they're going to kick me out of my home. Claire's heart pounded in her chest. She felt a rising sense of panic, convinced that something bad was about to happen. Her hand drifted toward the button beneath the counter, the silent alarm that would summon help within minutes. Before she could press it, Mr. Harris stepped forward, his calm, steady presence cutting through the tension in the room. Sir, let's step outside and talk, Harris said, his voice low and measured. He had seen this kind of desperation before, and he knew that escalating things wouldn't help. The man turned toward Harris, his shoulders sagging in defeat. They're going to evict me, he whispered, holding out the crumpled papers with trembling hands. I just need someone to listen. Claire's fingers hovered over the alarm button, but she hesitated. For the first time, she looked at the man closely, really looked at him. His clothes were dirty, his face pale and gaunt, and his eyes carried the weight of exhaustion and hopelessness. He wasn't a threat. He was a man on the brink of losing everything. Mr. Harris gently guided the man toward the door, speaking in soft tones that Claire couldn't hear. She watched them go. A strange mixture of guilt and confusion swirling inside her. In the pit of her stomach, she felt a flicker of shame. How quickly she had judged this man, how easily she had assumed the worst. As the door closed behind them, Claire sat back in her chair, her heart still racing. She glanced at the other customers, who had returned to their business as if nothing unusual had happened. But for Claire, the moment lingered. She tapped her fingers against the desk, trying to shake off the unease. She hated how easily fear controlled her, how quickly she judged people based on appearances. And deep down, she knew that today wasn't the first time. Her thoughts drifted back to Jordan and Mia, the couple she had dismissed so casually just days ago. She hadn't even given them a chance. They were no different from the man who had stood at her counter today. People in need, people with hopes and dreams, just looking for someone to listen. Claire leaned forward, resting her elbows on the desk and rubbing her temples. The weight of realization settled heavily on her shoulders. Had she been wrong? 
had she let her biases get in the way of doing her job, of treating people with the respect they deserved? She sighed deeply, feeling the beginning of a shift within her. Something needed to change. She couldn't keep going like this, making assumptions and dismissing people without a second thought. But change wasn't easy, and Claire knew it would take more than a fleeting moment of guilt to undo years of ingrained prejudice. Outside, Mr. Harris stood with the man by the sidewalk, his hand resting gently on the man's shoulder. You're not alone, Harris said quietly. There's help available. You just need to hold on a little longer. The man nodded weakly, tears glistening in his eyes. Thank you, he whispered. Harris gave him a reassuring smile, then watched as the man walked slowly down the street, his shoulders still heavy with the weight of his troubles, but his steps a little steadier. Harris lingered for a moment, glancing back at the bank. Through the glass, he saw Claire sitting at her desk, her expression thoughtful and troubled. He knew the look well. It was the look of someone beginning to understand the consequences of their actions. Karma had a way of catching up with people, and though Claire didn't realize it yet, her moment of reckoning was drawing closer. Life had a way of teaching lessons in unexpected ways, and soon, Claire would come to understand the full impact of her choices. Back inside the bank, Claire sat in silence, the weight of the day pressing down on her. She knew she needed to do better, needed to be better. Because if she didn't, she would keep making the same mistakes, hurting people who didn't deserve it. And deep down, Claire feared that one day, the consequences of her actions would come back to her. Just like they had for the desperate man who had stood at her counter today. The tables were beginning to turn, and Claire could feel the shift in the air. Whether she was ready for it or not, change was coming. And with it, the chance to finally confront the person she had become. It was a quiet morning at the bank when Claire's world began to unravel. She was halfway through her shift, shuffling through paperwork and answering routine inquiries when an unexpected email popped up in her inbox. The subject line read, Performance Review, Immediate Action Required. Claire's heart skipped a beat. She clicked it open, her pulse quickening as the words blurred before her eyes. The email contained a report listing complaints from several customers, complaints about dismissiveness, unprofessional behavior, and a lack of empathy. Her supervisor had flagged the incidents as part of a formal review process. Claire's stomach dropped. She knew she had cut corners with some clients, but she hadn't realized how many people had taken offense or how many had formally reported her behavior. Toward the bottom of the email, a particular note caught her eye. Complaint submitted regarding mishandling of a loan inquiry. Details under investigation. Claire sat frozen, her mind racing. Then it hit her, the couple from last week. Jordan and Mia. A wave of unease washed over her. Slowly, as if pulling a thread on a sweater and watching it unravel, she began piecing together the moments she had carelessly dismissed. She remembered the polished business folder Mia had handed her and Jordan's calm, polite demeanor. Claire had made up her mind about them the moment they walked through the door, never giving them the chance they deserved. She bit her lip, her fingers hovering over her keyboard. Something gnawed at her, an uncomfortable feeling that told her she had made a mistake, one she might not be able to fix. She scrolled through the bank's system until she found their application. When she opened the file and began reading, her heart sank. Their paperwork was flawless. Everything, credit scores, savings history, business plan, was meticulously prepared. They had done everything right. They were exactly the type of clients the bank should have been supporting. But Claire had dismissed them based on assumptions. She had treated them with disrespect. Not because of anything they had done, but because of who she assumed they were. Her hands shook as she stared at the screen, shame blooming in her chest. What had she done? Taking a deep breath, Claire did something she never thought she would. She reached for her phone and dialed the number listed on their application. After a few rings, Jordan answered. Hello? His voice was cautious, and Claire couldn't blame him for that. Mr. Jordan? Claire said, her voice hesitant. This is Claire from the bank. I... I wanted to apologize for how I treated you and your wife the other day. I've reviewed your application, and I see now that everything was in order. I made a mistake, and I want to say I'm truly sorry. 
There was silence on the other end of the line. Claire's heart pounded, expecting him to hang up or respond angrily. But when Jordan finally spoke, his tone was calm. Measured. Thank you for your apology, he said, though there was a slight edge in his voice. But we've already found another lender who believed in us. Claire closed her eyes, swallowing the lump in her throat. She had been too late. I understand, she whispered. I just wanted to say I'm sorry. Jordan didn't respond right away. When he did, his words were kind but firm. It's not just about the loan, he said. It's about how we were treated. I hope you take this as a chance to do better next time. The call ended, and Claire sat in silence, the weight of his words pressing down on her. She knew he was right. It wasn't just about the loan. It was about respect, dignity, and the importance of seeing people for who they truly were. The realization hit her like a punch to the gut. Her actions had consequences, real consequences, that affected people's lives. And while she couldn't undo the harm she had caused, she could learn from it. She could be better. Claire leaned back in her chair, staring at the ceiling. For the first time in a long while, she felt small. Not in a bad way, but in a way that made her realize how much her choices mattered. She had been so wrapped up in her assumptions and biases that she hadn't even seen the people standing in front of her. She knew she couldn't change the past, but she could change what came next. As the day wore on, Claire made a conscious effort to engage with every customer who came to her desk. She listened to their stories, asked questions, and treated them with the kindness and respect they deserved. It wasn't easy. Old habits die hard. But she was determined to do better. Meanwhile, outside the bank, life went on. Jordan and Mia's cafe was finally open, a bright and welcoming place that quickly became a favorite in the neighborhood. They poured their hearts into every detail, from the carefully curated menu to the warm smiles they gave each customer who walked through the door. They had moved past the hurt of that day at the bank, choosing to focus on the future instead of the past. But they hadn't forgotten. The experience had taught them a valuable lesson. Not everyone would see their worth, but that didn't mean they were any less deserving. And though Claire's apology had come too late to make a difference in their lives, it had sparked a change in her. A small but meaningful shift that would ripple out in ways she couldn't yet imagine. Because that's how life works. Small actions, small changes, building into something bigger over time. And sometimes, the greatest lessons come from them of the most unexpected places. Claire had learned hers the hard way, but she was grateful for it all the same. She knew it was just the beginning of a long road toward becoming the person she wanted to be. The person she knew she could be. And for the first time in a long while, Claire felt something she hadn't felt in years. Hope. Hope that it wasn't too late to change. Hope that she could make things right, one small action at a time. Karma had come full circle, teaching Claire the lesson she needed to learn. And though the path ahead wasn't easy, she was ready to walk it, one step at a time. Months had passed since that fateful day at the bank. Claire had stayed true to her resolve, using the experience as a painful but valuable lesson. Slowly but steadily, she made small changes in how she approached her work, and more importantly, how she treated people. She tried to undo her old habits of quick judgments and dismissive glances. It wasn't perfect, and it didn't happen overnight. But every day, Claire took a step toward being better. The complaints against her had been a wake-up call that she couldn't ignore. Her supervisors kept a close eye on her, and while her job was still intact, it came with the unspoken understanding that if she slipped again, there would be no second chances. Knowing that, Claire approached each interaction differently, determined to treat everyone fairly, whether they looked like they owned a business or had just walked in off the street. Even her colleagues noticed the shift. You've been different lately, a coworker commented one afternoon, raising an eyebrow. In a good way, though. Claire only smiled, knowing that her transformation wasn't something she could explain in a sentence. But while Claire had worked hard to change herself, a lingering regret stayed with her, Jordan and Mia. The memory of how she treated them haunted her, especially knowing that their rejection had been based on nothing but prejudice. Claire wondered how they were doing. Had they been able to open their cafe? Had they found the support they needed elsewhere? As fate would have it, 
Claire was about to find out. One sunny Saturday morning, Claire was running errands in the neighborhood. It was her day off, and she enjoyed the crisp air and bustling energy of the weekend crowd. As she strolled down a street lined with small shops, the scent of freshly brewed coffee drifted through the air, drawing her attention. The sign above the storefront read, The Corner Café, Serving Community with Heart. It looked newly opened, with colorful chalkboard menus displayed outside, and customers gathered around cozy tables. Intrigued, Claire decided to stop in for a coffee. As she stepped inside, the warmth of the café enveloped her. The walls were decorated with art from local artists, soft jazz played in the background, and the air was filled with the inviting aroma of espresso and pastries. Behind the counter stood a familiar figure, Mia. She was chatting with a customer, her smile radiant and welcoming. Claire's heart skipped a beat. This was their café. Jordan and Mia had made it happen. Mia looked up, and their eyes met. For a brief moment, Claire's heart pounded with anxiety. Would Mia remember her? Would she turn her away or call her out for how she had treated them at the bank? But Mia's expression didn't change. Instead, she smiled, a warm, genuine smile that made Claire feel both relieved and humbled. Welcome, Mia said cheerfully, as if offering Claire a fresh start. What can I get for you today? Claire felt her throat tighten. The kindness in Mia's tone made her realize just how far she had come and how much further she still had to go. A black coffee, please. Claire managed to say, her voice softer than usual. Mia nodded, quickly preparing the order. As Claire waited, she glanced around the café, taking in the details. The small bookshelf filled with donated books, the community board covered with flyers for local events, and the steady flow of happy customers. This was more than just a café. It was a space filled with heart, with intention, and with a sense of belonging. Claire felt a lump rise in her throat as she realized that she had almost stood in the way of all this, of something beautiful coming into the world. Mia returned with her coffee, placing the cup gently on the counter. Here you go, she said with a smile. Claire hesitated for a moment, then looked Mia in the eye. I just wanted to say, I remember you and your husband, from the bank. Mia's expression softened, though she didn't say anything right away. Claire took a deep breath and continued. I treated you unfairly, Claire admitted, her voice filled with genuine remorse, and I'm truly sorry. I had no right to dismiss you the way I did. Mia studied her for a moment, her brown eyes thoughtful. Then, to Claire's surprise, she smiled. We've all made mistakes, Mia said kindly. What matters is what we learn from them. Claire felt a rush of gratitude. Mia's words, simple yet profound, touched her deeply. They weren't just words of forgiveness, they were words of hope of a future unburdened by past mistakes. Claire nodded, blinking back the unexpected sting of tears. Thank you, she whispered. As Claire stepped aside to let the next customer order, she found a table by the window and sat down with her coffee. She sipped slowly, savoring both the rich flavor and the quiet sense of redemption that filled her heart. Jordan appeared from the kitchen, wiping his hands on a towel as he greeted customers with a friendly grin. He spotted Claire sitting by the window, and his gaze met hers for a brief second. There was no malice in his expression, no lingering resentment, just a quiet acknowledgement, as if to say, We're all moving forward. Claire smiled back, feeling lighter than she had in a long time. She realized that while she couldn't undo the past, she could honor it by becoming better, by treating every person she encountered with the respect and kindness they deserved. The world had a way of coming full circle, offering second chances to those willing to change. And Claire, for the first time in a long time, felt grateful for the opportunity to do just that. As the day unfolded around her, Claire sat quietly, watching the cafe thrive. She saw customers chatting happily, exchanging stories over cups of coffee, and sharing moments of connection that were far more valuable than anything money could buy. It was in those small, everyday interactions that Claire found hope. Hope that change was possible. Hope that kindness, even when delayed, could still make a difference. And hope that every person, no matter who they were or where they came from, deserved to be seen, heard, and valued. With a final sip of her coffee, Claire stood up and made her way to the door. Before leaving, she glanced back at Mia and Jordan, who were now working together behind the counter, their smiles genuine 
and their hearts full. Claire smiled to herself, feeling a quiet sense of peace. Life had come full circle, and she was grateful to be part of it, even if only in a small way. As she stepped out into the crisp morning air, Claire knew that the road ahead would still have challenges, but she was ready to face them, one day at a time, with an open heart and a willingness to grow. Because that's what life was about. Learning, changing, and becoming better. And Claire, at long last, was ready. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this story, don't miss the next one. Click on the video now to watch. We appreciate your support, and we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments.